It's day 20 and 21 of our 30 days decluttering challenge for highly successful homemakers. And day 20, we're looking at the medicine cabinet. And day 21, we're looking at the black hole that is under the bathroom sink. Let's get it started. I've got three tips for you and tip number one is to clear everything out. When you are working in small spaces like the medicine cabinet or even under the bathroom sink, the first thing you want to do is clear everything out and then wipe everything down. That way you know exactly what size of space you're dealing with. And the under the bathroom sink areas tend to be small and dark. So it's a lot easier to clear everything out so that you can see what needs to go back in. Tip number two is to get rid of the trash. Just get rid of the duh kind of things first. That just kind of helps speed the process, uh, move things along. So get rid of the trash first. So when we're talking about trash, we're talking about those things that are empty. You've used them up or there's such a negligible amount in the container that it's not worth keeping. Just get those things out so that then you can see what it is that you need to declutter and what it is that you want to put back. And tip number three is to declutter. But when you're decluttering, you're looking at expired medications, expired toiletries, things that you don't use, things that you won't use, and you want to get rid of those items. Now, let's talk for a minute about expiration dates on pharmaceuticals. In 1979, a law was passed that required companies to put expiration dates on their products. So that includes prescription drugs as well as over-the-counter drugs. However, studies have shown that most of those drugs will remain completely effective for up to 15 years after the expiration date. So what's the point of the expiration date? Well, the pharmaceutical companies want to make sure that you're working at 100% efficiency of the drug. So after 15 years, the drug may start to break down. It may not be as effective, not as potent. So that's why you have those expiration dates on those drugs. So even if the drug is five or six years out of date, it is possible that it will remain completely effective. However, it does begin to lose efficiency over time. And if you're taking a drug, don't you want to make sure that it's at its full potency? Now let's have a quick discussion about antibiotics. These are drugs that you are required to take in certain amounts. Maybe you have a four-day regimen, a seven-day regimen, or even a 10-day regimen. You didn't take all the drugs, so now you have maybe one or two pills left in the bottle. You might have a couple of days worth left in the bottle. You don't want to come back a year or so later because you've got some kind of a snipple or whatever and then try to take those medications because you need the full dose of the medication for it to be effective. If you take a couple days worth of an antibiotic that you're supposed to take for say seven days or ten days, all you're going to do is kill off the weaker organisms but the stronger organisms have now been exposed to that medication and so now they can be stronger, more potent. And so when they have offspring, those offsprings are going to be stronger and maybe more resistant. So that's why you need to take a complete dose of your antibiotics. And then if you don't take the complete dose, you want to discard those one or two pills or one or two days worth later. And since we're talking about antibiotics and prescription drugs, one thing you definitely don't want to do is pass those drugs along to someone else. Say for example, a child was ill, you took them to the doctor and they were prescribed an antibiotic and for whatever reason you didn't use up the drug. So now it's a year or so later, you've got another child that's ill and you're thinking, oh, I'll just give them those leftover antibiotics from when so-and-so was sick. No, you don't want to do that. First of all, you don't know whether or not this particular drug is effective for whatever is going on with that child. That's the biggie. And then number two, you don't have a full dose of medication. And number three, you want to take prescription drugs under medical supervision. And then the bonus tip 
is you don't want to buy organizing tools until you've got your decluttering done because you don't know exactly what you need until the decluttering process is complete. When you start that decluttering process, you want to put like to like similar products and similar categories. And then the biggest thing for my family, for those large band-aids that might fit on a knee or an elbow or something that goes on the hand, I need to make them accessible. So that means I need to put them where my family members will tend to look for them. Meaning that if I had a cut and I needed something of this size, where would I look? If I go to the medicine cabinet, it's gonna be on this shelf in this bathroom. So that's where I keep those kind of items. I do have a large emergency bag that has quite a few things in it that I keep for my prep purposes. However, in the house, when we're just looking for something real quick, we really don't feel like getting that bag out and getting it unzipped and digging through it. So things that typically happen around here or on the hubby's boat or in the garage, the products that he will need or that I might need to care for those kinds of things I keep in this particular bathroom. I either keep here in the medicine cabinet or underneath the bathroom sink. And again, if it's something serious or something major, then I can dig out my prep bag. So this black hole has been tamed. Just tamed. I've got a lot of products in here, a lot of duplicates for toiletries and cleansers that I use in the bathrooms. Over here I have medications and hair products. This is where I keep my extra supplies of things. And then basic day-to-day -to -day toiletries. Dixie cups and extra toothpaste. Extra bottles of deodorant and bars of soap. Just stuff that we use in bathrooms. And if I needed to look for something for the bathroom or some kind of toiletry, this is the first place I would look. If you want to jump in on this 30 days decluttering challenge for highly successful homemakers, you still can. I will put a link in the description box that has the printable that shows you what we're working on each day. And you can just download that. For more episodes in our 30 days decluttering challenge for highly successful homemakers, click here.